In this screencast, we're going to derive the constitutive equations that we are going to use to help us solve systems in which we have mass transfer through diffusion. And so let's start with the following idea. Say we have a tank of uh, some fluid. And with any good system, we should have some kind of coordinates. And the only coordinates we're going to care about in this is going to be z, which we're going to say is positive in the up direction. Now let's say at some time zero, we drop in some other species, some other liquid. And it covers the surface of our tank. And so at some later time, we've noticed that a lot of these particles of this other species has diffused down in our container. At a later time, T2, we see that particles have moved further down in the tank, but not maybe as many. And then at time T3, we notice that more of this fluid has moved closer to the bottom. Eventually, if we leave this here long enough, more and more of this fluid at the top will start moving down. We'll notice that we don't really notice that there's anything moving anymore, and we've reached some kind of equilibrium state. So from this, we, we saw that we have some kind of mass transfer from a high concentration to low concentration. We also notice that the net mass transfer is equal to zero when the concentration is uniform. And we also get an idea that the transfer rate is proportional to the area which it's transferring through. In this case, the cross-sectional area. The larger the area, the higher the transfer rate. But we could also imagine that it wouldn't be very convenient if all we did was talk about mass transfer for a system that's stationary. What if we looked at a system that was flowing, and all of a sudden at time equals zero, we drop in some species into our flowing system? Maybe at some later time, this has started to spread out. At some later time, the spread has become even bigger, and so forth, until we get a very large spread that initially started off as a very small droplet. Do those same rules we had before still apply? Well, not really, but kind of. If we focus on this system with respect to it moving, then why not? If we say that our coordinate system is the same at each location as it moves, and that's all we want to define our movement from that point, then it does kind of obey those statements that we had before. We're going to come up with a way to characterize this mass transfer for a moving system. And then we'll relate that back to a stationary system, because that's kind of what we are going to care about more often than not. So recall back from momentum transfer and heat transfer. It followed the same pattern. It followed the pattern that we had a flux of something that was proportional to some gradient and had some kind of resistance to this flux by some property of our system. So for instance, momentum flux. We said that the momentum flux, the shear stress, was equal to the viscosity of the fluid times our velocity gradient. This was Newton's law of viscosity. So we have our flux of momentum proportional to a gradient, in this case a velocity gradient, that's resisted by the viscosity of that fluid. Our heat flux, Q, was equal to negative K dt dx. This was Fourier's law of heat conduction. Where this was our heat flux, this was the thermal conductivity of our material, and this is our temperature gradient. So what's to believe that mass flux wouldn't follow the same form? So if we were to look at a molar flux, given a binary mixture of A and B, Fick came up with his law of diffusion, which followed the same pattern, saying that the molar flux of A in the direction of Z was proportional to a concentration gradient. We had a negative sign because we know it goes from a high concentration to a low concentration. And then our property that helps dictate this is our diffusivity of A and B. This is also called a diffusion coefficient. Now it's important to note that this is based on our moving system and characterizes the mass transfer due to ordinary diffusion, which is just random molecular movement. 
when our total concentration is constant, this gets brought out of the differential and we write it in terms of a mole fraction instead. So that is a common form, you might see it. It also could be rewritten in terms of a mass flux, which we denote by a lowercase j, and this would be in terms of density, still some diffusivity of a and b, and then in terms of our mass fraction, w here. But this didn't quite cover mass transfer in all circumstances. As we mentioned, this was with respect to the molar average velocity of the mixture. This explains the ordinary molecular fusion, but what if we had mass transfer due to our bulk flow? What if we wanted to look at the system and instead try to characterize the mass transfer that occurs from point A to point B? So this is where we're going to start deriving this. So let's look at the molar average velocity of our mixture. I'll designate it as Vm. We could say that this is the sum of the velocities of each component times its concentration over the total concentration. And we know that the sum of the velocities times the concentrations is going to equal the total net molar flux of both A and B, which we could write as the flux of A plus the molar flux of B. Right, to prove that, again, let's take a look at VACA. What are the units on this? We have a velocity, so a length per time, multiplied by a concentration. We're going to say mole per length cubed. This is going to give us a mole per length squared per time, which is the units for flux. Hence why we have a flux on top. Similarly, if we look at an individual species velocity with respect to a stationary coordinate, we're going to write this vi. We could say that it's the flux of i over the concentration of i. We also know that the mole fraction, xi, is equal to the concentration of i over the total concentration. This means we could expand our molar average velocity of our mixture as such, where we have the velocity of a times the concentration of a plus the velocity of b times the concentration of b all over the total concentration. This, based on this relationship, is going to give us xA, the mole fraction of A, times the velocity of A, plus the mole fraction of B, times the velocity of B. So now if we want to separate out the velocity due to the species diffusion in the mixture, which again we related back to that Ji, the flux, we're going to write VID to indicate the diffusive velocity of that species, we know that this is going to be the actual velocity of the species minus our molar average velocity of the mixture. So now we're isolating out that diffusive velocity. And we could write it in terms of our flux of I over our concentration of I. So very similar to what we had before where we said VI times CI was equal to our net flux of I. In this case, VID times CI is going to give us our molar flux with respect to our moving system. Again, to characterize a net flux, because that's what we're really looking for based on systems that have net flow, both bulk and diffusive mass transfer, we want to put this in terms of a stationary coordinate system. So let's rewrite this in terms of our stationary coordinate system. So VI is going to be equal to the velocity due to the diffusive mass transfer as well as our bulk flow, in this case, the average molar velocity of our mixture. We know Vi is just Ni over Ci, so plug that in over here. Our diffusive velocity is our molar flux Ji over Ci, and the molar average velocity Vm we wrote as the combination of the fluxes of A and B over the concentration. So then we could rearrange this equation a little bit by multiplying through by the individual concentration Ci. And then we could plug in what we know. In this case, we're going to look at the flux of A. So the diffusive flux of A through B in terms of the mole fraction Xa plus, in this case, Xa, which is our Ca over C, times our total flux N. And we could write the same thing for our flux of B. Notice where I've substituted B for A. We also know that the flux is moles per area per time, so we could rewrite our molar flux Na in terms of our total molar flow, little Na, over our area. 
So these two equations become pretty important when we start looking at characterizing mass transfer. And there's a couple specific cases that we're going to start with, that of unimolecular diffusion and equal molar counter diffusion. And those are things we can find in other screencasts. So please check those out.